Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome to my home and studio at Wendy Acre Cottage. It's a hundred year old craftsman cottage where I love to paint and garden and entertain and care for all my wonderful fur babies, both those that are adopted and all the little fosters. It's also my home base for many fun adventures of the art, history, and gardening kind. So now we have to look for our inspiration, and we do that when we travel. But are you going to be a more abstract painter? Are you going to be a more realistic painter? Um, are you going to do more cartoon type illustrations or more realistic illustrations? You need to think about what your style is and what you're wanting to do. And one of the best ways to figure that out is by looking and seeing what other people do and what appeals to you. So I'll be right back and show you some books of illustrated books that I collect and um, different pieces and parts of it that really appeal to me and what I've done to integrate those into my journals. So just to share with you some of my books, I love to collect um, hand illustrated books and I've got two examples here of children's books. And one is, I call it Linnea, they probably pronounce it differently in France, but it's Linnea in Monet's Garden. And it's a story of um, Linnea, who's a young girl, who goes to Monet's garden. And it's interspersed with actual photos of Monet and his home at Giverny and his garden and his paintings. So I just love Monet and had to own this for myself. But look how beautiful these illustrations are. And I love that the flower goes off the page and on to another page. I'll probably integrate that into some of my work. But the little cat, I mean, who hasn't had a little cat do their head like that right up against your leg? So I love this book. And then this one right here is The Complete Adventures of Tom Kitten and His Friends by Beatrix Potter. And again, hand illustrated, beautiful flowers, beautiful little kittens all throughout this book, but completely different than the illustrations in the Monet's book. And see how some of them are just pen and ink? And then others are complete watercolor paintings. Some of them take up the whole page and then some of them have vignettes throughout the page. So the, this is by far some of my favorite right here. These are important to me because it was someone's passion when they went to Yosemite to do watercolor studies of everything they saw so they could remember it. So this is actually someone's illustrated travel journal. And they used watercolor. And some of the um, illustrations are very simple, but they're just beautiful. And I've never been to Yosemite, but I, I would love to go after seeing this. And so it's not difficult. You can see there's just basic shapes being used, but it clearly conveys where they were. And then of course they wrote up where they were and, and what they saw. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. The waterfall that's there. Trees, pine cones, vignettes. and neat drawings, the different leaves. So that was what was important to them. Now this one blows my mind. I cannot believe that this gentleman was so crazy about trout that every trout that he caught, he painted its portrait. And this whole book is nothing but pictures of trout. I didn't even know there was that many different kinds of trout. 
the Rio San Lorenzo trout, the Rio Yaqui trout, the Gia trout, the Apache trout, the spawning Northern Dolly Varden trout, Northern Dolly Varden trout, Southern Dolly Varden trout. I mean, it's, it's um, stream bull trout. We're talking, you know, 150 pages of trout illustrations. It's just amazing. There's not a lot of um, words. He, he did name them and he did say where he was when he painted this. But the detail is, is quite amazing that he would go to that much detail to show the difference between this trout versus the other. And um, that's what caught my eye on this particular book. These are fun because they are cookbooks. And I love to cook, I love to eat, I love to paint. So this is a little French cookbook and the, the cover is illustrated in watercolor and then there's a few illustrated drawings throughout the cookbook also in watercolor, which I love. And I have no problem doing a painting of my meal. I think I've shown you that in some of my other journals. This one's called a sprig of mint. It's another um, illustrated recipe book. with recipes and then little little illustrations and beautiful borders. And Susan Branch is one of my favorite authors and I probably have six of her books. And this is called The Summer Book. There's also The Vineyard Book, The Winter Book, The Autumn Book, The Spring Book, and then one other one that I can't think of the name of it right now, but um, just she'll take a subject matter and then just illustrate it with these adorable adorable watercolor um, illustrations and you can see the the beach umbrellas the flip-flops the flowers the watermelon the ice cream cones i mean it's hard not to want to just copy this because it's so beautiful I've got a little butterfly over here i love the um uh, the gingham um, tablecloths the different roses the beach chairs, person at the beach with the wind blowing, because you can tell because their hat, the ribbon on their hat's blowing. We've got a thermos and a, a sailboat. But here is her garden, and that just takes me to a whole nother place. You know, it's like, I want a garden just like this. And she's got, um, the little bee houses and she's got hydrangeas as well as vegetables and flowers and herbs. We've got picket fences and birds and straw hats and it's just so lovely. The whole, the whole book is lovely. So if there was any style I would want to emulate, it would be this. Even the, the handwriting uh, or the font that they used is so, so beautiful and just can't get enough of her, of her illustrations. Croquet, a lighthouse, clothes drawing on a clothesline, books to read, beach umbrellas, roses on a picket fence, farmer's market, wild blueberries. I mean, the whole thing is just a joy to look at all of these. These two are kind of fun. This one's called Cozy, a British, the British Art of Comfort, and it's hand illustrated. And there's a lot of pen and ink drawings in here on different ways to be cozy at home. Coffee, tea, blankets, fireplace, the hearth, um, candles. It's just a, a joy to read and I love the illustrations of that. 
This one's fun. This was uh, Mr. Bodington's etiquette, charm and civility for every occasion. And again, it's, it's, they're not connected. It's just little um, icons of things, um, a pram, a turkey, a gift, um, pencils, a wine bottle, a typewriter, but it's an illustrated um, etiquette book with beautiful illustrations throughout. This book right here is by Katie Daisy, and I was not introduced to her until I really got into illustrated journaling, but this woman lives it. This is a field guide to how to be a wildflower and love, love, love this book. One thing that she suggests, and I have taken her up on this, is if you are um, painting near a stream or near a river or near the ocean, and that is to go collect some of that water and to use that to constitute or reconstitute your watercolors so that you're painting into your painting the ocean. You're painting into your painting um, the lake that you happen to be sitting next to while you're painting or the stream or the river. And her, her books are so beautiful. Lots of flowers, lots of um, butterflies. This is her house with all these flowers coming out of it. Even her handwriting, her fonts that she creates are painted. There's quotes throughout here. This one happens to be by Henry David Thoreau. She encourages people to have wanderlust. And I love the fact that it's a country lane with barns and fields, but from her perspective, the flower is that big. I mean, it's as big as the clouds. Beautiful deer, tulips, trees, mountain. And this is a quote by John Muir. Lists, I love lists. Magical places to visit. Exploring the redwoods. Marvel at the Blue Ridge Mountains. These are list of national forests, national seashores, daydream under the giant sequoias, hike in the Appalachian Trail. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Look at this lily of the valley. Yeah, I love, love, love her, her work. So that's something I, I collect, love that. This is one that needs to be in every library. Queen Victoria sketchbook. I don't know if you watch Victoria on PBS, but I've become fascinated with Queen Victoria. And when I learned that she had a sketchbook, I learned it through that PBS Masterpiece Theater show because it shows her painting in there at one point and found the sketchbook. So I've got a copy of it. And you can see the work that she's done, painting her children, painting Rosina, A lot of these are just pen and ink, and then some have watercolor washes. It's her husband and herself, and different people at court. And it just feels very historic that what we're doing as watercolor um, journalist is, there's just been a history of this, and she's part of that tribe of um, travel journaling, illustrated travel journaling. This is fun. I discovered this one when I was in Scotland. It's um, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. So it's Prince Charles Watercolors of Scotland. Isn't that beautiful? English scenes, different English scenes. And that looks like Windsor Castle right there. Prince
Prince Albert's Kitchen Garden Buildings. I'm not familiar with those. Looking towards North Creek. And see how simple that is, but how beautiful it is? You don't have to be, you know, an extraordinary drawer or painter. You know, just paint what you see, paint what you feel. And, um, I mean, this is pretty extensive. This is Sandringham House. But some of this stuff is very, very simple. Views over Hillington on a January afternoon. Farm buildings in Norfolk. Cottages in the snow at Sandringham. Just a winter scene at Sandringham. The whole book have different views from the moors, the countryside. This is the reason why I really wanted the book was of Scotland. This is Balmoral. More views of Balmoral. Looking toward the lock. Some of these things I can't pronounce. That's gorgeous. So this is a fun book to own. Now these are all my travel journals. I mean, excuse me, the illustrated books for, of traveling. This is specifically for traveling. Um, I've got one of New Orleans, Washington, D.C., and Charleston. Again, these are some of my favorites. If I was to emulate any of these books, the Susan Branch ones would be one, and then these three would be the others. But just adorable little pieces of churches, a gateway walk, street vendors, The harbor, fishing, um, the Gullah people and their customs. That's the one of Charleston. New Orleans, oh, it's just gorgeous. The flowers, the maps, the boats on the Mississippi restaurants, oysters. I mean, there's just no end of what you could illustrate. Washington, D.C., our nation's history, the cherry trees in bloom, the monuments. You can capture all of that. This one right here is called Jane Was Here, and it's an illustrated guide to Jane Austen's England. Beautiful paintings of houses, horses, monuments, maps, plants, books, sparkling rosé, appetizers, again, but it all has to do with Jane Austen. This one's fun. This is another fun. This is by Ray Dunn, and a lot of people know her work from her pottery. But she went to France in the 90s and forgot her camera and decided that she was just going to paint everything she saw. So here she's painting different colors and flavors of macaron. It. There's a, illustrations in here of hors d'oeuvres. And there's one where she painted all the dress. Here's her handbags that she had. But she had one of dresses that I just absolutely loved. Here's perfumes from the market, the different perfume bottles. Flowers. Teapots antique linens from the flea market.
shoes, sushi, spoons. So again, this is her personal travel journal that she ended up adding photos to later and turning into a book. Here's some fancy teacups. That one's lovely. And then these are just more illustrated travel journals from all over the place. This is from Murray County, Tennessee. Um, the Murray County Historical Society sells this book. It's full of Mildred Hartsfield watercolors. This is the architect of the British Country House. I love these. It's illustrations of these humongous houses that are all over Europe, actually, but mostly in um, England and in France. This is the London sketchbook. And then I also have the, Vent the Venice sketchbook. And these are places that I've not been, but I love that other people have gone, they've done their sketching, they thought enough of them to publish them so people like me can buy these books and live their journeys through them and through their illustrations. And I just can't wait to fill all of my journals and to be at one day know that I can go back and look at those and relive them and remember the joy of being in the moment, the joy of actual painting, and also sharing that joy with friends that I'm traveling with or with family. And it's, it is by far my favorite, my favorite part of painting. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for indulging me by looking at the books with me. Um, but they really will help get those wheels turning and help you decide how you want your journal to look. And I'd love to see it. So whenever you finish that, even if it's just one page, be sure and put it on Facebook or social media and tag me in it so I can be sure to see it. And I want you to, above all, just have fun with this. Thanks so much.